Welcome to First Oma Gathering Place. It's lovely to have you join with us for worship on this Mothering Sunday. To all mothers and grandmothers out there, I hope that you've been thoroughly spoiled this morning and that you'll have lots of contact uh, with your family. Because of the restrictions at the minute, that contact might have to be over the phone or over the internet rather than in person. Uh, but we trust that it will be a day of great joy as you connect with your children and your grandchildren and maybe even for some of you, uh, your great grandchildren. And we hope and pray that it will soon be possible for families to meet up together. And when that day comes, I'm sure that you will celebrate the joy uh, that's in your family. So I trust that today will be a day of blessing for you as you give thanks to God for uh, the gift of your family. I'd like to draw attention to a number of notices. This coming Wednesday, we publish another walk, prayer walk through the town of Oma. Uh, Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day. So we're going to focus on the church fellowships in our town as we walk uh, through a given route. Um, the details of the walk will be published on our first Oma page and on our Facebook page. And you can carry out the walk at any time uh, during the coming week or even in the weeks that still lie ahead. Please remember to adhere to the COVID regulations if I'd walk in with someone outside of your household. Then on Thursday, we continue our Acts Bible study series, Life Lessons in Acts, by Zoom, 10 o'clock in the morning and again at 7 o'clock in the evening. If anyone would like to join then please contact either myself for the 7 o'clock meeting or Audrey for the 10 o'clock meeting. Those are the announcements. Today's service, we're going to focus on family life. And so we come before the giver of all life and the giver of families as we come before Father God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of the world and the giver of life, we bow before you, thanking you uh, for that gift of life. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that you created uh, such a wonderful world uh, for us to live in and that you created us, men and women, in your image to be in relationship with you and in relationship with one another. So we thank you, O oh Lord, for the fellowship and the family uh, life that we experience uh, today. And we give thanks, O oh Lord, that as we gather here this morning, we gather as a fellowship, a family um, of people who come to worship you as our Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, that we are united and joined together with one another through faith in you and in your Son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world uh, to suffer and to die a death on the cross at Calvary so that we could be reconciled uh, to you, so that we could know our sins forgiven, so that we could be restored uh, to our Heavenly Father and to dwell with you in your heavenly home for all eternity. So we thank you, Lord, for uh, Jesus. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for his sacrifice for our sake. We thank you, Lord, for the example that he set for how we are to live as brothers and sisters in Christ in this world until he returns. Forgive us, we pray, for the times when we have failed to act as your children, when instead of showing love and kindness and compassion and mercy and justice, we have done the exact opposite. Help us, we pray, to live for you and to bring honour and glory to your family name. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you did not leave us on our own to live the Christian life, but you sent your Holy Spirit into the world to guide us, to direct us, to give us uh, the energy, and the vision and the gifts that we need uh, to be your children in the world today. So we thank you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for all that you bring into our lives and we ask that you would help us, O oh Lord, to live as your children, uh, to serve you in the world and to call others into a loving, uh, saving relationship with you through faith in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Our service this morning, as I said, is focusing on the gift of family and family living. So our opening hymn is a hymn that we sang um, a few years ago as the congregation of First Doma gathered in our church building for worship. And it's hymn 488. Brother, sister, let me serve you.
Acts 6 verses 1 to 7. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Thank you to Laura Kennedy for reading our scripture lesson for us this morning from Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 7. This morning we are focusing on family life and it's a good day to focus on that as it's also Mothering Sunday. But if you have uh, switched on your television screens, if you've opened a newspaper, if you've scrolled through social media sites, you will see that there's a family in dispute at the moment. And that family is our royal family. And the dispute is as a result of the fallout from the Harry and Meghan interview. It's not pleasant to watch or to read. And we trust and pray that uh, relationships between family members uh, won't be permanently da damaged as a result of this, but that work will undergo uh, to bring about uh, reconciliation and understanding within that uh, family. And we have to say that we have all experienced family tensions in our own families, haven't we? Uh, problems between uh, children and their parents, problems between brothers and sisters, problems between husbands and wives. Uh, so we know all about family disputes and how difficult it is uh, to bring about resolution when there's a difficulty. And the same can be said for the family of faith, for the Christian communities, uh, that there can be disputes, uh, misunderstandings and tension uh, within the Christian fellowship. But here in Acts 6, we see an example of how that family tension, how family disputes can be resolved. To understand uh, the background uh, to this dispute, uh, we need to give you. I need to give you a little bit of uh, background information. The Christian believers gathered together in Jerusalem um, to worship God in the temple, uh, to share in fellowship with one another in their homes, uh, to preach the good news of the gospel out in their communities. Uh, they also had a responsibility to care for one another and to support one another. But there was a practical problem within the early Christian church. And that practical problem was in result of the distribution of food to those in need within their community. And so the Christian community had a significant number of widows as part of their community. And some widows uh, weren't getting a, a fair distribution um, of food. And so a complaint was brought to uh, the apostles for them to sort and to solve. The difficulty was that it wasn't just an unfair distribution of food, but it seemed that uh, the distribution of food uh, was dependent upon the cultural background of the widows. So there were two groups of widows in that Christian fellowship. Widows who came from the Hebrew community, Jews who grew up in Israel and um, who lived in the towns and villages um, of Israel who had come up to Jerusalem uh, to worship at the festivals and who had now become uh, believers in Jesus Christ. But their background, their cultural background was Hebraic. They spoke Aramaic, uh, they grew up in Israel um, and so they identified culturally as Hebrew Christians. 
And then there were, uh, there was another group of widows. Uh, they also were Jewish, um, but they came from uh, towns and villages in the Mediterranean. The Roman Empire had expanded across into Europe. And so some Jewish families had left Jerusalem and gone and settled in towns and villages throughout the Mediterranean. And whilst they continued to be Jewish and to worship God, culturally they uh, became Greek. Uh, their language uh, was Greek, their cultural um, understanding was Grecian. So uh, whenever they came to li live back in Jerusalem again, um, often people returned to Jerusalem uh, when uh, they were of an older age because when they died they wanted to be buried in their homeland. And so many of the Grecian Jews uh, returned to Jerusalem in their older days and as a result then there were a number of widows in, living in Jerusalem who culturally identified themselves as Greek. Those, some of those widows then had come to faith in Jesus Christ. Some of the Hebrew widows had come to faith in Jesus Christ. They were both Jewish um, in background, but culturally they came from different places, spoke different languages. One was a foreigner, the others uh, lived uh, in the homeland. And so it appeared that this unfair distribution of food uh, was as a result of cultural differences, with the Greek women not being as well supported as the Hebrew women. So this dispute was brought to the apostles. What were they to do? Well, the apostles were all Hebrew in background. They were all disciples who had uh, been uh, followers of Jesus and had then come to a saving knowledge of him and had been gifted by the Holy Spirit to preach the good news of the gospel. But they came from the Hebrew background. And here they had a problem uh, with believers in the Greek background who weren't uh, receiving a fair distribution of food. What were they to do? Well, they were the leaders. They could have ruled and made a decision themselves, uh, but they didn't do that because the Christian way is not to dictate and to lord it over um, other believers that we're all uh, united together. We're all equally valued and of worth. And so uh, the apostles called the people together. They heard the dispute and then they came up with a solution. And the solution was we focus on preaching uh, God's word, and uh, that's the responsibility that God has given to us. But because we're now growing in number, we need to uh, consider electing some leaders who will look after the practical distributions and the practical needs of our community. And so they said to the community, let's vote for some uh, leaders um, who would look after this area of work. And people thought that was a great idea, and seven men were elected. It's interesting to note that all seven who were elected came from a Greek background. And so the leadership then was both Hebrew and Greek. One looking after the preaching of the word, the other looking after the practical needs of the community, but both working for the Lord and for his glory. And so they were united together as one leadership as they served the people together and served them fairly. So the dispute was resolved. And we learn lots uh, from that. That it's a corporate decision for all of us uh, to work together, to build relationships with one another, to see that fairness and justice is carried out amongst our community. But that we also have to elect those into leadership roles, some who will preach the word, uh, some who will teach the scriptures, some who will practically deal uh, with uh, the practical solutions uh, that are needed for a Christian fellowship. But all people that are called to serve, um, either in leadership roles or in practical roles, are called to do so um, because they show faith in Christ and that they're full of the Holy Spirit and that they seek to work together as one for the good of the whole. And as a result uh, of the decisions that were taken uh, by the apostles and to appoint Stephen and his six friends uh, to look after the needs of all widows, uh, the community rift was healed. And we find in verse 7 that many people looked to that community and came to faith in Christ. Maybe it was because of the way they demonstrated their love for one another and the care that they provided to both Hebrew and Greek as they served one another's needs and as they gave glory and honour to God. And so many came to faith in Jesus Christ, including some 
uh, from the Jewish leadership who saw an outworking of God's law at work in the way in which the Christians loved and cared for one another. So that is a calling for us as a Christian family uh, to do the same, uh, to show love and care and compassion for one another, to be united together as we resolve our difficulties and as we seek to serve Jesus in the place that he's called us to be. So that we can be the fulfilment of Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17, where he called uh, to God and he asked that his the believers who would come after him would be united together as one that um, they would be united in their faith in Jesus Christ, that who is united with God, the Heavenly Father, and that they would be a fellowship uh, working together as one, a fellowship that would bear witness to the world of the love of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit at work within them. So we hope this Mothering Sunday that we will continue to be a fellowship uh, that cares for one another, that deals sensitively with uh, difficulties and disputes within the community and seeks to ensure uh, unity amongst believers and also that our witness for God and for his glory will shine out uh, to the community around us that many will come to know Jesus as their saviour and lord and become part of our Christian family. So let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the fellowship of your church. We thank that through faith in Jesus Christ, that we can become your sons and daughters, that we are brothers and sisters with Christ and with one another. We ask, O Lord, that you would help us to work together as a family, to be united in purpose, to care for one another and to provide for one another's needs, and to live our lives in a way which brings glory and honour to your name, and is a testimony uh, to the world of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that others may come uh, to know him as their Saviour and Lord and be welcomed into your family and be united together as one. These prayers we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is Mothering Sunday and I'm delighted to have uh, two women from our congregation, one a mum and one a mother and a grandmother, to come and share a little uh, reflection on what it means to be a Christian mother in today's world. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Barbara and Dorothy for joining us uh, for this Mother's Day interview. It's lovely to have you both here with us and sharing a little bit about what it's like uh, to be a mother in today's world. So first of all, Barbara, maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit about your family and something of the joys and challenges of motherhood. I'm Mary to Trevor and I have a two and a half year old daughter called Lucy and a golden lad called Marley. And um, just the joys is just seeing Lucy grow and develop every day. And um, there's always something new. Um, from our first step to talking. Um, I'm trying to teach her the way of life and learning everything new um, from the farm, from the house, and to even care for Marley. Um, it's, it's just lovely to see it. That's great. I'm sure she's asking you lots and lots of questions these days. Yes, she is indeed. <laughs> It's always hard to answer those why questions. And I'm sure, Dorothy, you've, you've had your run of it too with your children. Maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit about uh, your family and some of the joys and challenges that you face. Um, I have a daughter. We have a daughter, Emma Jane, who most of you will know, and our son, Nigel, which a lot of you may not know. Um, from the day they were born, the, the feeling of the immense love for them it just fills your heart. And that grows as they grow. And you, just the feeling of being so blessed with children um, every day they grew and sometimes too fast. Our son was now six foot three um, and just watching them mature into the responsible adults that they are. With many happy times over the years, um, they, they bring so much joy and the innocence of a child. They just face things as they are. Um, our son was very accident prone. So um, we, we, there wasn't too many hospitals that we didn't visit over the years. And it's ironic now that he's working for the NHS. The challenge to motherhood, I would say, are the responsibility. Um, parenthood's not a rehearsal, um, and what's right for one child may not be right for the other. 
teaching them and advising them um, from wrong and protecting them in life. Sometimes we got it right, sometimes we got it wrong, but together we learn from our mistakes. That's great, Dorothy. Thank you very much. And in case anyone doesn't know, Dorothy's married to Gordon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> better half. <laughs> That's great. Well, obviously, motherhood has faced its challenges over the last year in lockdown. And Barbara, particularly for you, because Lucy's only two and a half, so nearly half her little life um, has been experienced in lockdown. So uh, maybe you'd like to share a little bit about the challenges that the past year has provided uh, for your family. Well, I suppose between um, childcare was probably our, our main issue, um, having to work from home and after Lucy at the same time and um, both Trevor and myself done it and he's still working at home but um just keeping an eye and trying to fit that in and um, I suppose we're no different to anybody else you know everybody else has had their uh challenges and um, I suppose we've been lucky we've been living on the farm um but it's been more than busy so we're all kind of playing our part including Lucy and um, feeding the calves, bedding the calves, and I suppose not being able to see grandparents and cousins and family was a major challenge. Yes, you can do Zoom, you can do WhatsApp, you can do, but that face-to-face is just, nothing beats it. You can't, you can't put a price on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can't, so, um, no, it's, it was, it was a challenging time. Like, as you say, it's half of Lucy's life and she has, She's grown to to learn with it, mm-hmm. um, but I say that age group has, has will miss out on a lot of development, and um, by mixing with other mm-hmm. children, the toddle along, mm-hmm. um, crash everything. You know, it's it's been so hard, um, but yeah, I suppose we'll we'll come to kind of be our new normal, and hopefully it will change. Yeah. Um, but um, just know it's the best of it. Yeah, yeah, we, we do, we do. Yeah. And suppose in a way too, you know, having that time with their parents as well is something that maybe a lot of children don't get to have. Mm-hmm. So yeah, her, you know, maybe it'll all balance itself out. Uh huh. Uh huh. We're trusting yeah. that that'll be the case for for all our children, but uh, particularly challenging, I think, for little ones for their social skills. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I would say once they get to the playground, once they get to Granny's house, and I think it'll soon come back to them. Then. It will, it will, yeah. And they may forget it, whereas some of the older yeah. children might have more issues to deal with. Yeah. Um. Thanks, uh, Barbara, for sharing that. Um. Lucy's doing so well. We saw her earlier, and she's a she's a bundle of fun. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. both you and Trevor on your toes. Uh, Very much so. <laughs> Um, Dorothy, obviously your children have uh, now grown up and have children of their own. So not only are you a mother, you're also a grandmother. Um, and obviously that's brought its challenges to you in lockdown. So maybe you'd like to share a little bit about the challenges as a mum and a granny in lockdown. Yeah. Um, our son, Nigel, he has got two boys. And we're very fortunate. I know that many people don't have their family here in the province. We're very fortunate we do. But um, the biggest worry we had was that Nigel's a paramedic. And last year at the start of the pandemic, like we were all in the same boat, you know, it's the fear of the unknown. And he had to move along with all um, and many other NHS staff into a mobile, mobile home for a number of weeks um, to protect his family. Um, the worry and concern for him at that time was immense. And we could only face time. We couldn't, as Barbara says, the physical contact, you know, especially with the grandchildren. Um, our daughter, we're very fortunate, Emma Jane lives very close and, you know, she was fit to come up and the children and talk and through the patio, you know, through the, the window. But again, there was no physical contact. So whenever the children were leaving, they would go to the front door and this was the hug, the, the virtual hug. So um, then whenever the second lockdown come, um, it was said that you, if you were a grandparent or if you were caring for children for it, key workers then it could be continued so thankfully um granny dot's daycare was in full action and i um continued the physical contact to look after the grandkids which is whenever i'm happiest but then the homeschooling come (laughs) and um this was definitely a challenge for granny dot 
as teaching nowadays is so very different from the way that I was taught and from the way that my two children were taught. It was quite frustrating for me, but it was, I found that it was confusing, especially for Lillianne. So I done what I could, and then Emma Jane had to pick up whenever she came home from work. <laughs> Great challenges in it. And uh, we saw lots of pictures on Facebook there, Dorothy, of your uh, granny dot's daycare and the kids all looked happy. And uh, I'm sure you did a sterling job, but I'm glad that I'm not having to teach um, maths or English or reading uh, to today's generation because it's totally different from uh, my day. Uh, but uh, they're now back at school. So it's, yes. uh, it's aftercare now you're doing, is that right? Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And then obviously, um, we're uh, part of First Oma Christian Church and we have our Christian faith uh, that has uh, helped and sustained us over um, our lifetime and particularly over uh, the last year. Um, so Barbara, maybe you'd like to share a little bit about how your faith has helped you through the joys and sorrows of motherhood as experienced to date. I suppose it's helped through the trial and tribulation through the last year. Um, I suppose very much so the first lockdown um, um, just the, we try and bring Lucy up um, within the church environment and she just she would go to church nearly every day you know she'll say church today church today you know um, and we're just going to continue and try and teach her her Christian values the way as they both Trevor and myself were, were brought up and hopefully we'll get back to do that in, in person um, in the church house yeah I know um, and we, we long for that day uh, to come when we will be able to have the children um, around us as we worship God. Uh, certainly I miss that personal contact uh, with the kids that belong to the congregation and their parents and their grandparents and all yeah. those other uh, family members. Because we are a family um, in the church. And uh, as someone once said, you know, that it takes, you know, a community to raise a child. And certainly in Christian faith, that's what we believe. Uh, that uh, yes, the parents take their vows um, and seek to raise their children in faith, but they do that surrounded by the love and encouragement of the wider church family. Uh, so we've tried to do it a little bit in the virtual world, but just like um, you know the interaction with parents, uh, the relationships uh, develop best whenever we're able to meet face to face. So we look forward to those days and the opportunities that will be ahead uh, to welcome our children and to teach them uh, the things of God and to grow in faith in Jesus. Um, Dorothy, for yourself, um, maybe you'd like to share a little bit about um, how your faith has helped you through the joys and sorrows of motherhood, um, then letting go of your children, uh, and then welcoming your grandchildren. So how has faith helped you through that process? Um, my faith has been strong all my life. Um, I had a good role model in my own parents and my, my own mum. Being a, a parent, as I said before, is a huge responsibility, but to have God as a constant source of help in times of need but also remembering to praise him in joyous times. My mum always told us never to be off her knees thanking God for the blessings. And so I am a positive person and do thank God all the time that, uh, for everything that is good in my life and of which there are many. I don't dwell on negative side of things. The glass is always half full. Um, in the past year, if it has taught me anything is that material things aren't important. They're nice to have, but they're not important. Family is everything, and my family is my life, as it is for all mums and grannies. Thank you very much, Dorothy. That's lovely. Thank you for that encouragement. And thank you to Barbara for sharing uh, your uh, journey in motherhood. And uh, we wish both Dorothy and Barbara uh, God's richest blessing uh, on them and their husbands and their children, and in Dorothy's case, obviously, um, grandchildren. And we pray the same for every household uh, connected uh, with First Oma Congregation and those that we know. So as it is Mother's Day today, we're going to bring our prayers for others before God and we'll focus on motherhood and each of us will lead a section in this prayer. So let's bow before God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring you in our prayers today, all of whom we love, for our family, our friends and our neighbours. Help us all to live so that we may be strengthened and enriched the life of the family. Help us to build with you the kind family which welcomes the stranger, the lonely and the needy. On this special day, we remember that all through our lives, we have reason to be thankful for our mothers. 
When we are babies, they do everything for us and spend much of their time feeding us and keeping us warm, safe and clean. When we are children, they teach us help and comfort us sharing hobbies and our ideas, encouraging us and keeping us happy. When we marry and have families of our own, they still support us, advise us and share our troubles and joys. When they grow old themselves, they still love and care about us, though they may be weak and tired. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our mothers, for all they have done for us. And we pray that the love they show for us may be reflected in the way that we show our love for others and in the way we each strive to live our lives according to your will. We bring our prayers to a close as we join together in the family prayer, which Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, 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 and forgive us our trespasses, as we as forgive we those, those who trespass against us. us. And lead us and not, not, not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For yours is the kingdom, kingdom, the power and the glory, and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again to Barbara and to Dorothy. Uh, we're now going to finish our service with a hymn focusing on mothers uh, from the scriptures. And it's going to be sung for us by Daryl Simpson. And it's entitled, For All the Faithful Women. For all the faithful women who served in days of old, to you shall find speaking given to all the stories told. They served with strength and gladness in touch your wisdom. Proclaimed your power to save To Hannah praying childless Before the throne of grace You gave a son and called him To serve before your face Grant us her perseverance, Lord, teach us how to pray, and trust in your deliverance when darkness hides our way. We honor faithful Mary, fair maiden full of grace. Oh, the Christ, our brother, who came to serve our race. May we with her surrender ourselves to your command and lay upon your altar our gifts of heart and hand. For Eunice and for Lois, we sing our thanks and praise. Young Timothy, they nurtured and led him in your ways. Raise up in every household, true teachers of your word, whose lives will bear clear witness to Christ our risen Lord. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to God the Spirit, who 
binds the church as one with saints who went before us with saints who witness to we sing glad alleluias and strive to do As you leave this service today, may God's love sustain you and may you love those who surround you. May God's spirit empower you and may you empower all those whom you meet. May God's joy fill your hearts and may this joy overflow to the ends of the earth and bring glory and praise to our Heavenly Father. Amen.